Hola community, welcome to episode 138 of Blender Today Live, this summary, this weekly meeting we have together here to see what's new in Blender, what has changed since the last week which last week was uh, more about the back, uh, the, the week before was more about back fixing. So last week we had Dalai in the show talking about the, um, the development of Blender and more on a, on our like organizational level based on geometry nodes, but uh, more about this uh, way of working that Blender is exploring the Scrum slash Agile. Uh, it's pretty popular, but it was new for us and it was Awesome, actually. So if you haven't watched that, I recommend it to watch it. It's not related to what's new in Blender. Unlike today, where we are going to talk about so much. Geometry nodes keeps improving. Actually, this this week's, uh, I think it's mainly geometry nodes because, um, you know, we are getting close. At the end of this month, we're going to have the new Blender release, 292. So that means that developers are focusing on fixing those issues. However, the team at Geometry Nodes keeps adding stuff. So let's get to it. Remember that we are live. We're streaming live from Amsterdam where it's very snowy, super nice. It's, it's, it's like Christmas, but yeah, if it was uh, uh, nice and white. Notes and volumes, this thread opened by, well, the website is slow, by Momotron, thank you Momotron, <laughs> love your avatar by the way, here you can ask questions, we're gonna be answering towards the end of the show, towards like uh, the, the, the second part, I think it's gonna be rather fast today, so let's see, let's see what's new in uh, Blender, so let me grab my list of updates here, I have I don't know what's what's the name in English. Like in, in Spanish, we have, or at least in, in Argentina, we have a, a name. So like when you're cheating, you have like a, a, a paper under like well, when you're cheating in school, for example, uh, in an exam, and then you have like a small paper with notes somewhere under like the yeah the uniform, whatever cheat sheet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Machete in in Argentina, we call it that crib shit Sh uh, sheet. No, that's when I say the word uh, many times and I get a mistake and then you, YouTube cancels this video for everybody. Okay, a cheat sheet. All right. All right. A cheat sheet. We <laughs> I already have issues when I try to say the dope sheet and uh, people make fun. Because in yeah, if I said with my Spanish accent, the other word would be with I, right? Sheet. So, okay. Let's get started. Let's start with a bang. Let's start with the, the project that is shining and it's going to be the start of the show for 2.92 and by the looks of it for 2.93 as well. The first, we have a bunch of new notes. Let's go with the first, with the, with the new notes. In the Blender 2.91, let's, uh, I think it was 2.91, 2.91. In Blender 2.91, we had a few new nodes added. Um, it was this, no, no new nodes, new modifiers, volume to mesh modifier, remember? And then we also had the mesh to volume, and vice versa. We had these two modifiers, which were, um, they are amazing. They, they were, they came out of nowhere. Now they allow you to convert a volume to make it into a mesh, into a geometry that you can actually uh, like a texture. And it's great for like stylized uh, volume and stylized um, fluids. This uh, can also be the other way around. You can convert a mesh into a volume. You know what? You can also do that now via nodes. Via nodes. You have nodes. Why not? The developer that actually made both. He made the, the modifier and now he made the node. Um, Jack Luke, he um, made even a little video for it. So, points to volume node. So it's not taking a, a mesh per se, but it's taking the, um, the points. So when you distribute this, this concept of points, uh, which will be much more clear once we have like actual 
point cloud objects with edit mode and stuff. But uh, in the video, it's super clear. Just distribute a few nodes. Let me zoom in. Actually, I could open this in a different tab. Here, there you go. So you just distribute a bunch of nodes. And then with the point to volume node, you just basically have volumes. And then you can join them back to with the original uh, mesh, but you can also just not do it. So super straightforward. It's just uh, you can choose, uh, you can filter by voxel amount. You can set the radius to be an attribute. So that attribute can be randomized or can be done with the, anything, you know, compare, uh, vector math, uh, align, you have the world of options here because it's attributes, that's the power of attributes. How are you guys doing, by, by the way, with the with the attribute system in, in the Blender uh, geometry nodes? I think at the beginning, it was more of a, a question, even for, for developers in how the users will respond to this attribute system. Is it too complex? Is it, uh, it's, once you get into it, you actually start to get the hang of it. Um, one feature that is coming up that he still has to be designed uh, it's the attribute search which is basically taking the um the now right now you have to type you have to first you have to know what the attribute name is that which is great <laughs> you have to know like ah it's position radius uh scale and um, rotation well we are um the, the team is working on designing the uh, how it's the search going to look if you also, you can also join uh, the Everything Notes um, channel on Blender Chat and you can also propose ideas. Uh, for the time being, I think it's going to be um, just basically a, a drop down with a search. Um, so like when you're searching for any kind of data block, but also it should have the um, built in attributes kind of highlighted somehow, right? Um, you should, it should search because those you cannot delete in a way you can just replace. Um, but um, yeah, they should be, I don't know, tell apart from the, from the rest. It's really not a complicated design, but um, it's something that it's gonna affect all the nodes. So it's good to keep it in mind. Also adding new, do you even need to add a new attribute or just type something new and it's gonna become something. Um, so yeah, that it's um, some of the questions that are coming up. But also there are not only questions, but answers. So the same way you can do points to volume. Now you can do volume to mesh, volume to mesh. So same, <laughs> same old, but in the shape of a node. So you can combine it with stuff. So, okay. First we have this in this example by uh, Jacques Luc basically have the um, the cube so this if you convert it to volume just becomes eight little volume points then convert that to mesh and then distribute points since that again wow it's pretty crazy <laughs> whoa Hans is here in the chat hey Hans, how are ya? <laughs> it's a developer from the team, from the from Geometry Notes team. And other teams, UI team. The awesome. <laughs> so good to see you here. Alright, let's uh move on. Let's continue. So uh, there are more notes. So I so far I just been talking for a few minutes and we have two nodes. The points to volume node and now the um, volume to mesh node, but that's not all. We have a couple more nodes that were added in the last week two weeks collection info node so the same way you have an object info node now you can also have collections there are although there are a few things that are not working yet there are some patches that have been uh, worked on for example for instancing the there are many nodes that don't support instancing yet but there is a patch here that the gentleman in the room hands made it uh, and it's already been tested by simon and it seems to be fine um, but yeah it has to be added still however you can add collection so not only objects collection info it's getting there you see it's like um 2.92 is gonna be great but 2.93 though <laughs> 
so much greater. Like this node is viewport node. All right, so this is one uh, of those nodes that are gonna become like it sounds very ad hoc, very like okay, is viewport one function, one node. Just just do the one thing. It's a node to know if something is gonna be in the viewport, if it's calculated in the viewport. So if you send it to render, when you press F12, it's gonna give uh, this this node has an output that's gonna be true or false. So if you're rendering, it's just the output is true. If you are in the viewport, it's uh, false. Wait, no. If you render, the output is gonna be false because it's not viewport. And then when you are in the viewport, it's gonna be um, true. So yeah, it's just a toggle basically. But with this, you can do um, you you can you can set different values for different uh, settings. For example, in this, the same way that you have in the um, I don't know in the subsurf, for example, if when you have subsurf that you have levels for the viewport and for render, well, you could do now um, with the this with the, with the new is viewport node. Um, with the help of an upcoming node, which is a switch node, that's gonna make things a bit easier. But uh, so far, it's uh, it, it's yeah, it feels like it's just one node that does one thing. At the beginning, we're also thinking about having a node that maybe called visibility and then contain all the visibility for like its viewport, its render, its. Um, but I think it's in in a way, yeah, you have less nodes, but on the other hand, it's less discoverability. So. We just, yeah, you can admit that at some point the list just becomes too large and people just will start searching for stuff. So if the search becomes um, becomes nicer, so you can just just type in the like when you add a node, just start typing and then you 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 search for viewport and then you find this node, then you know what you are looking for. So you know what you're gonna get. So yeah, the list of nodes gonna get long but also there are nodes that have been improved so another node that got improvements is the attribute math node so again has been uh, adding the uh, all the functions that are available in the vector math node most of them it's uh, gonna be now available in the math node but with the simplification that the result is always a float attribute and not a vector attribute so exciting you know what else is exciting is a change that it's not there yet but it's under the hood there so there is a um, a developer from the community that is jumping into the project geometry nodes and is working on just new features there's actually two developers that i'm gonna be talking about today first one is fabian schemp uh, or schemp schemp he's been working on multi-input sockets what does it mean? It's any socket that actually in the task is very, um, very nicely shown. It's a socket instead of being able to support just the one uh, node, like just the one, sorry, one input. Where's the video? I had it in a branch in the other multi-input socket. Ah, in this one, because it, this one came from many different patches. There you go. So this is the idea uh, behind this patch. So to have a special kind of nodes that allows you, the, of, uh, sorry, of sockets that allows you to connect multiple inputs into this one um, socket. So in the case of geometry node, in the case, if you want to connect like three or four geometry nodes. Now you need like one um, different geometry. Now you need a bunch of joint geometry um, nodes, one connected to each other because it only have two inputs. So with this, we're gonna be able to have it all in one uh, one node and then it's in. And this has been committed, the backend has been committed, but not the, um, the, the node itself, like the change to the geometry node nodes. And that is gonna be next week apparently according to what uh, we have in the chat Hans is giving here the spoiler that maybe we're gonna be talking about this next week hopefully all right 
Isn't that awesome? You know what else is awesome? These other developers. So congratulations, Fabian. I think this is your first patch in Blender, not your last one. Actually, he's been working also on some uh, uh, visual improvements or changes, main improvements, I would say, in the, um, in the notes themselves, in the node editor itself, but it's been done in a branch. So nothing, I, I try not to talk about branches during Blender today and just share what it's available today in master so the other developer that has been contributing and getting stuff in master like in blender itself is victor luis de gusem or victor luis new add attribute proximity node so attribute proximity node this is also going to change a lot the way you work oh, this is this website is so slow that when I zoom in, yeah, wait, <laughs> hold on. I zoom in too much, there you go. I just want the video, the video, because video makes a world of difference here, or the pictures. So yeah, basically a node to tell the how close the um, points uh, are close to the, to, the, uh, to the object, and then make an attribute out of that. So you get the, the geometry, that comes in the target so the other object that is going to be used as a reference and then write it into a um, result attribute and you can use that for anything so in the same way that in the for example in the in the node itself in the modifier the vertex weight proximity for example this writes into a vertex weight um, but the node writes in, into an attribute which Vertex weight is an attribute anyway, under the hood, but um, it's much more, much more clear. Once we have actual um, preview of the attributes, it's gonna make it easier. But isn't it great? This is in. So congrats, Victor Luis, Luis, Victor Luis. Let's. Uh... <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm getting distracted by a bunch of. More likes and Pablo takes the hoodie off. <laughs> okay, a thousand likes. <laughs> um, let's um, and the, and the last last uh, news regarding the geometry nodes is that now the align rotation to vector node um, gives you a new option where you can choose the uh, pivot axis, so you can fix it into a uh, one axis. So instead of being automatic, now you can set. Uh, I know which axis to to pivot from and then rotate based on that. So all the freedom in the world. How many? Ah, uh, now we are 180 likes. It's uh, it's not going to happen. You're not going to make it. <laughs> 2000 likes and Pablo takes his glasses off. Gee, stripped easier. <laughs> Alrighty. So, align rotation to vector just got more powerful. You can choose the pivot point. It's not automatic anymore. You can just do... You can also choose auto, but it will... Um, yeah, it can, it can uh, set the pivot point. And there is... There was a file that um, Simon was working on. I don't know if, if, if Simon you posted it. Yes, here. Awesome. Look. There is, uh, he even made a use case for it. Simon is awesome. So here we see it in action. Align rotation to vector. And then this is without the align to vector, uh, rotation to vector and without the, uh, with the randomize. But then if you align it in the X axis with the automatic pivot, then it goes fine. But once you know it's already aligned in the X axis, then you can add another align rotation to vector and then choose from the x-axis that was automatically uh, uh, using the, the the normals now you rotate it based on that axis so here is when things get interesting because yeah now yeah all the freedom in the world super nice 200 likes okay okay yeah and there's only 500 people watching so uh we're not gonna make it to a thousand ha huh. Let's continue. Isn't that great? Align 
rotation to vector. I think I got to cover and everything of the geometry nodes project. That was quite a lot, actually. Three new nodes, new UI stuff like the input sockets, and improvements on the attribute math and the align rotation to vector. What is switch? Topics. Yes, let's switch topics. <laughs> Chris Pencil, this one actually is a couple of weeks old. Um, it's a new option to duplicate layers with empty keyframes. So you can duplicate the... Um, uh, right now when you duplicate the layers, it comes with the, with, the, with the keyframes. And sometimes you just don't want that. You just want a blank new uh, uh, duplicate uh, layer. So now there's an option for that. So very handy, as uh, here as Antonio, Antonio says, for the cleanup and paint process. So thank you. For that, Antonio, there as there were a few improvements in the um, in the add-on in the grease pencil add-ons for uh, rotation of the canvas and for resetting the camera, um, but uh, they didn't have any pictures, so I didn't save the um, the the log. Just to let you know. And then in the random updates of the week, so in the, in the random section, we have a new operator to in the image editor to flip images i think it was a request since blender one <laughs> and uh, finally pablo Navarro made it made it it was um yeah it was long requested but um it is uh, i think it was requested back when the image editor was image editor paint uh, view uv editing um, everything in one, like mask editing and everything in just one uh, in one editor. And the reason was that if you do this flipping, how does it affect all the other um, editors? So now that we have a dedicated image editor, um, that is just the one that just does the one thing, uh, these kind of features work really well. So thank you, Pablo, for working on this. Super neat. Super neat. You can see it here in action. And um, Pablo has been streaming, by the way, on Twitch. Um, uh, how he makes this. Maybe he made even the patch in the live stream. I don't know. But uh, it's uh, super nice. Super relaxed to see him working. Alrighty. Let's get to it. It's in the image menu, by the way. Image, flip, and then flip horizontal or vertical. Then user interface face section alrighty let's go through this. these are not so many they're just super fast first one tooltip for data block selector menus showing full name i library info yes when you have long library names this could be an issue so um then in, in 2.83 it was it was really bad i mean i didn't even have to cover it but it was really bad if you have a long name and uh and library name and a long uh, it just just didn't really work that well in 2.9 they have a different color so it's easier to spot and the name gets a uh, um, cut so it is kind of better but it still is really bad now with the um there there is a task where there is a where is the picture it's basically a tooltip that uh, shows you the um the full path so when you leave the mouse over here, there you go. I knew I found this one. Um, so you leave the mouse over and now you can see pretty much everything. So you have the um, file where it's coming from and the source library and uh, the, the actual item that sometimes get cropped there. Alrighty. A lot of spamming this today. Eh? I already like silence like a band like uh, five accounts <laughs> and you didn't notice or you maybe noticed alrighty then our next one uh, this one it's uh, it's awesome Harley again thank you for working on this you have you ever noticed that sometimes blender just crops the text and and like when it doesn't fit and just doesn't do and just doesn't do anything um, like doesn't add the ellipses well that was an issue in the code that he actually fixed he went ahead and fixed it and somehow it uses the same space 
but now has the the ellipsis number so you can go all the way up to one um yeah one um character and even then when the ellipsis doesn't fit it still shows uh but that's very extreme but yeah awesome so basically <laughs> if you look at the code it was like oh yeah after if it doesn't fit then uh, just skip it <laughs> and then but then what um yeah it's funny when you read those pieces of code so thank you harley next one oh yeah this one again by the pixel perfect department that is uh, usually harley you have jenny also um this is oh, this is this is great look so in um, when you had an input and you have icons yeah, an input text input uh, field and then you have some icons there well they were not aligning properly so they were for example this is the this is the shape of the of the icon itself and the active zone what you would actually click didn't correspond with it so I don't know who noticed this, um, but uh, but or if it was posted in the in, in right click select or as a or as a um, as a, I'm sorry I'm banning another one <laughs> or or if it was um, asked on the forums or maybe a paper cut. In this case, um, he went ahead and made it match. So this is the icon and this is the active zone. It's even a bit longer than. The icon itself which is better especially if you're working with a pen you want it to be less precise so the pixel perfect department has done great great improvements and even the alignment looks better now like it, it like fits better the space isn't that awesome but not as awesome well this one is actually it's not user interface it's actual functionality but it didn't fit in any other you know the any other section maybe the random section this was requested by the community and Marco, also known as Nasios in the uh, in the forums, made this patch to make the Nishida te sky texture use altitude in actual distance, so in, in meters in this case by default. So yeah, it's actual distance. You can you can you can use real life measuring techniques and um yeah it was requested by the community in right click in no in dev talk super nice yeah before it had this random number like i don't, I don't know exactly what it meant like 1.2 what um but now now it doesn't so thank you marco for working on this and uh, another one in the user interface slash key map uh, side of things user experience is that now you can use shift tab to cycle backwards of edit button so you press tab to go um, down and then shift tab to go up when editing buttons grouped buttons and uh, last but not least there's two fixes that I again I don't usually mention fixes but they uh, this one I um, Actually, if, if I didn't see this one on Twitter, people were raging about this one on Twitter, but it scared me because I, by the, um, by the look of it, it didn't, like, by the name, like surfety form, fix binding, binding, fix binding vertex artifacts causing spikes. I was like, yeah, okay, that's uh, maybe not a big issue. But actually, by reading on Twitter and the rage, people like, yeah, that's amazing. Yes, apparently it was a very big issue <laughs> that um, while using the um, surface force modifier and the um, and binding, sometimes you will have some vertices like, yeah, not not following the surface deform. So they were like causing spikes. And uh, Alexander Gabrilov went ahead and fixed it. So thank you very much. Alexander and the last one by also by Harley and it only affects Windows users um, It's a fix, but um, I don't know exactly um, Just by the by the description um, It says child windows on top. So Apparently the child windows were not being drawn on top on the windows. So There's no image no anything. So I don't really know the difference uh, if you are a Windows user and have, we're having issues with this, uh, this will result. But people are celebrating. 
So yeah. Yeah, an image or a, or a video would be awesome. I don't have a Windows here, so I can't uh, try it, but go ahead and try it. What is a child window? Well, any any window that comes from the main window that is created after. So if you split a, um, a editor or if you open preferences or render or any any new window that spawns from the from the main window. Alrighty, time to get on with the questions. 24 comments. Let's see if we get to do it. All right, in let's uh in the comments here in the chat, people are actually excited about it. It is a big deal. Yeah, it is a big deal, right? Then you guys should celebrate more because that's how I judge <laughs> the uh, the when when I see a change that I'm maybe not so uh, in a, in a section that I'm not really into um, that much, and like rigging, for example, then it's more about the excitement of the community. Wait, what is this with depth of field? Hey, spoiler alert! Depth of field, it's uh, it's getting some love in Eevee, and uh, but it's not there yet, or is it? <laughs> Thanks, guys. Uh, is it is it there? Sometimes did they? I think it's coming this week, but I don't know if it's there now, as in they published it. Blender.org. Uh, so how to find out developer.blender.org and then I go into the diffusion blender history and let's see improve a hey, improve report warnings yeah this is nice okay this is a spoiler for next week um, update VDV. Yeah, there are many libraries that were updated, by the way. If you compile Blender, the install dependencies uh, now has a bunch of new libraries updated. So I would recommend to run it again to build uh, the latest, the, to install the latest uh, libraries. Um, no, it's not there yet. Gee, you almost give me a heart attack. That is, uh, it's gonna be there next week, I bet. So get ready for depth of feel I'm, I'm kidding it's fine if you <laughs> um, how's the new right click select coming along it's uh, it's there actually it's um let's see if I have if I have um, well uh, we added this weekend we were working on it we added the uh, commenting posting um, liking comments liking posts um, Let's see if I can if I get to I can I can see uh, I don't have it running now I can do uh, work on community the I call it blender community um, blue working community and then run server and uh, let's see community um so yeah right now it's uh, it's very basic so we have the community we have community listing we add filtering by um, by categories and then you have and then we have um, we have the loading of, of uh, posts yeah I know this doesn't look exciting but it's it's this is a completely whole new system so uh, we have uh, comments we have this is a copy paste from one of the posts we have um, we have some yeah, we have comments and then uh, this actually works better now. For example, if you like something or if you like a post, it also updates on the sidebar uh, because much nicer. We have editing of posts. Um, we have drag and drop of files instead of, of the post. Um, also, we want to have like uh, so you can have multiple images and you don't depend on other on other places, uh, on other sites. So yeah, it's it's there. We have like, share, we have ask. Ah, yeah, you, you're gonna be able to have like click on a hashtag. Like you can do hashtag notes, and then you click, and then you see all the posts that have that hashtag. So yeah, it's uh, it's it's coming. Wait, the stream freeze, froze. Is it okay? I am. <laughs> well, community crashed the stream. <laughs> 
It's back. It's back. Chat refresh. Okay, okay. I am back. Well, you see, the community is so epic that it's already... <laughs> anyway. Bad stream. Okay, sorry. Maybe my internet went down for a bit. Yeah, so, yeah, it, it's maybe not super exciting for you, but this is, for me, this is super exciting because this is built from the ground up and it's, it's, it's really, like, really live and we are making it ourselves. Well, posted three times because of an issue with the website, but, but yeah. Confirmation when you delete a comment. <laughs> uh, editing of comments and this is just Blender today, but we're going to have also for Blender, um, for Blender, for right click select, it's going to have its own features for graphical, it's going to have its own features for, we're going to have an, uh, a section for, for add-ons, for themes, for a bunch of new stuff. So get ready. Alrighty. Now, let's uh, drag and drop image. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna have drag and drop images. It's gonna have, yeah, and, and the best thing is that any feature request that you guys have for right click select for Blender, for Blender community, um, for graphical, is that we can actually make it without going nuts because the current system is way too old and it depends on, on many other systems that, yeah, now this one is ad hoc. It's like the repository is called Blender community, it's not something else, so yeah. All right, time for Blender questions. First question by Blender Defender. Hola, Pablo, how are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing pretty, pretty well. Since you didn't answer questions last week, um, yeah, sorry about that. I made the, the video. I tried to make to keep the video short because it, so people can, well, one hour, but it was actually 59 minutes, which I hope makes more people want to watch it. And it was a presentation, so yeah, sorry. I collected the top comments and their questions to ask them in the name of Blender community. <laughs> Very nice. All right, number one, Fred asks, have you heard from Ton again? Oh yeah, I saw him even. How is he doing? I haven't heard from or seen anything from him in ages. He's pretty active on uh, on Twitter. Um, Ton Rosendahl. It's, uh, he's pretty active. He's been tweeting. Yeah, February 6, 5. It was a weekend and it was snowing here, so probably very busy. But uh, no, he's doing great. He's, uh, he's, he's uh, super nice. I'm um, going tomorrow maybe to the studio so I can confirm. But no, I actually heard him today because I had a meeting with Dalai and the Geometry Notes people. And uh, I heard the uh, tone going and on and, and uh, asking if it was cold uh, in the building because the temperatures are like minus 14, minus 13 degrees Celsius here because of the blizzard but yeah don't worry it's uh going around and taking care of people as usual second uh i think the, since we blew past the old target of 1k per month the blender foundation page needs a new target what do you think um i think the blender foundation um needs like the blender development fund doesn't need a new target per se it needs a, um, a a more clear goal of okay what's what's happening now right now we have the grants page but still not very clear you see we still don't have for 2021 it's being worked on the blender foundation report for 2020 it's also being worked on hopefully gonna be out at the beginning of uh, march at the end of the month maybe beginning of march then the this area should be should be just better right because like six month grant for Kevin Dietrich for cycles. Yeah, but what? Where, where are the, where is he working on? NPR rendering um, for, or like tracker support. Well, that, that you see it. If you report an issue, you're gonna see that you, you get answers pretty fast. Uh, but yeah, there are many, you see, we need to be more, more clear with this, uh, with this before and then set a target because if you set a target, if you say like, yeah, let's reach 150, it's you are re really just asking people to donate, and you shouldn't ask people to donate every day, just like uh, just constantly, because then it just becomes a noise. Uh, if you have a clear goal, it's like, okay, we reach 150, we can fly everybody. You know, remember flying <laughs> when you can fly people, all the developers in Amsterdam, and we can have a one month um, workshop. I don't know. If you have that clear goal, then uh, yeah, I think it's better. But for the time being, um, 
I think it, it's it's good as it is. Of course, the more the the better. But we need first to make clear the goals of the of the development fund, and uh, be more transparent with the with, with this with the grants. Where are they going, and uh, what's coming out from it? Um, but yeah, remember if you want to see what the people are doing, actually what the developers are doing in Dev Talk, uh, you have the meeting notes. And every week the developers are sharing what they worked on and you can see here a bunch of people in the meeting notes of the dev talk all right let's see next question i ask there is an issue with this community site there are many issues someone has been spamming clip arts yes uh, that's another reason why we are making the whole website from scratch is that we uh, want to focus on the moderation tools um, so yeah uh, are the moderators aware of this there are no moderators on blender uh, well i mean moderators as people that officially moderate not really we have a uh, kneecap that he is um, no, not not cap, but the user Nick cap. He's um, he's poking uh, Francesco and I about when there are issues or people in the community. If you see this issue, these uh, people spamming, just poke me or Francesco or us or in Blender today or in Blender chat. Then um, we're gonna look into it. We are deleting them manually every user, and also if you've been having issues posting on blender today on blender community it's mainly probably because you have negative karma and at the moment that's one of the um, few like you see here momotron has 2500 um, but if you if people don't vote your comments your your not your comments your posts then it's uh it reduces the karma which is silly i know but it's the only way at the moment it's a temporary uh, measure to prevent spam but uh, yeah, it should be in, in Blender, uh, in right-click select, in the new community system, things will be decoupled. So your karma is not going to be affected just because you posted a right-click select idea that people didn't like. Uh, it should, should be different things. If you're in spamming, then yeah, your karma goes down. But yeah. Um, sorry, I hope you plan a repost functionality. Yes, we have actually, we have. We have planned it and it's actually already uh, working. But um, I don't know how we are going to launch this site. Uh, I think maybe we should do a beta first and then ask people from the community to um, like individually to, to test it. Uh, <clears throat> just to try the functionality without having a thousand people jumping in the first day. I've been trying to learn Mantaflow and have understood some of it, but when I try to have bubbles and foam in the water, I have yet to get that to look good. Also, it seems to make millions of particles for the bubbles, and even on my new system, it's horrible slow. How do I control how many bubbles it makes? It's a very good question. I am not uh, familiar with that, unfortunately, um, with the with the bubble system of Mantaflow. I I'm sorry, but I would suggest trying some a different uh, system. I have no idea. Have you uh, asked the community maybe? the? I know you are asking the community now, but maybe we can um, ask in Blender chat in the physics uh, channel, physics module, um, because I, I'm not familiar with it, sorry. Or maybe the community here can reply to this comment. Daniel Lapalm asks, I love Geometry Node so much already. I already missed a flag system like yours. Ah, <laughs> yes. Uh, ditching the Geometry Output Node and using flags instead will speed up seeing which node does what so much. I was wondering what the team thinks about that and your proposal. I think we're all pretty... Um, pretty... Great. Um, pretty happy with it. Pretty... I think we are all aligned with this. However, there are some, uh, for example, the RGB. For some kind of viewers, you still want to have the, uh, you still want to have a dedicated node, like a 3D viewer or like um, a value viewer or list or you need some kind of viewer. But in this case, the the flag system is just to tell which node or whatever node is going to be the output uh, instead of having a dedicated output node. Um, but yeah, this needs uh, needs design. Uh, is baking still going to have an overhaul in 293? Oh, I'm not sure because I'm not sure. 
I really hope, but I haven't seen anything recently and uh, 293, it's, it's, uh, it's coming close. Um, maybe poke the forums about that, dev talk, just to see how it's going. Kozanagi, wind tab seems to be completely broken. Cursor offset pen pressure when you have multiple monitors. The issue appears since 2.92 became beta and on 93 alpha and in 291. Everything works fine. That's annoying because I always use the latest builds for Pablo's experimental features. Um, what is the best way to report this issue? Uh, in the tracker. Um, I think in, in the tracker, but just uh, mention what exactly it's the the issue like multiple monitors but yeah maybe like which which uh, tablet or just just using the regular um the, the regular tracker i think it will work you can't be the only one having this issue so look for other um other bug reports regarding this what is he drinking today i'm drinking mate Yerba mate. It's like tea, but way more bitter. And people confirm the wind have issues. I'm sorry, I'm not super familiar with it. I'm on uh, I'm on the penguin on Linux. Just to say, I noticed that Cosmos Laundromat was on Netflix here in the UK. Great to see, amazing. Yes! Netflix, um, actually Netflix has the uh, HDR version of Cosmos Laundromat. So they made an HDR version based of the, um, the, of the actual H, yeah, EXR files. So if you can, if you're in the UK, I think in the US also, I didn't check here in the, in the, in, well, here in the end, in the Netherlands. Let's... Ah, now I'm curious. Now I wanna know. Is it? Well, no. Ah, shut up, shut up. Why do they play videos with audio? As soon as you start. Ah, here. And then, let's see... Cosmos Landromat. Oh my gosh, it's there. <gasps> what? I did... I never seen it. I thought it was only in the US. What? Is my name there? No, they removed it. Oh, you can go to the names. Okay, just make this short the one, the only one film that you watch the, the credits to. Yeah, he had the Hermerson, Sarah Lofer, and then, yay, Andy, Pablo, Manu, Francesco. Wow. Look, mom, I am on Netflix. Awesome. Here, hand, hands up. I liked it. Hey, instead of giving likes here on uh, on YouTube, go to Net uh, Netflix and then give a, a like if you want to to this. It's uh, I hope more people get to see it. I didn't even know it was uh, it was available everywhere. Alrighty, um. That is all for the for the questions by Blender Defender. Next question, Lapis C asks, um, Hola Pablo, having a volume being outputted instead of a geometry is extremely exciting, but I see a parallel with Blender and Houdini that I do not like at all. There is no socket type difference between a volume or a mesh. In Houdini, you can turn a mesh into a volume and the resulting volume can be connected to mesh filters. So, such as bevel or subdivide, and there will be no indication that the user did something wrong. I feel it is important to point out, um, as the last thing Blender needs is to adopt the user and friendliness of Houdini. Um, yeah, the output should be different, but it's still, is it, is, is there a, maybe, yeah, maybe there should be, like, it's still considered geometry, right, and it, and, right, and it's, attributes and everything um 
we are we are thinking about the the error messages yes volume is geometry error messages there you go look at hans he's been working on error messages um and i even made a, 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 a little mock-up for that but yeah there is the um there is the the patch that needs to be done Alrighty. why am i saying so many times already <laughs> Every time I need to change uh, topics. Next question is uh, Hi, Pablo. What? Uh, Pipeliner ask What will follow after geometry nodes? Rig nodes or the comeback of particle nodes? Physics node? Um, hmm. Well, well, well. If you've seen the, the meeting last week, um, that I wrote this, uh, made this graphic where you can see what are the low risk, high perceived value projects related to everything nodes and the top con um, contender is um, parametric modeling parametric modeling this weekend last weekend i was uh, giving a course a for beginners absolute beginners course uh, focused on 3d printing and stuff in spanish and it was i haven't teached blender for beginners in so long and um, I, I felt so embarrassed when i asked them to add a cylinder and don't touch anything now change the settings which settings they're gone oh okay delete the <laughs> delete the cylinder add them again change the settings but don't touch anything and it's so embarrassing with very simple notes for primitives and for basic editing we should have some kind of basic parametric modeling just the basics and then the community can jump in and make all the uh, the remaining tools and all the all the crazy stuff and then the geometry nodes uh, team or like the everything nodes team can move into something else more exciting or just as exciting like i don't know uh, something more scene level you know manage objects or uh, physics or yeah basically build the foundations for another um, nodes system and have the community jump in and help with adding more tools for parametric modeling for example i think that would be a very good um, way of working the same with geometry nodes it's not that it's done and and we just need to move on it's um it, it's in a great shape for community to contribute nodes Alrighty, <laughs> gee, why am I saying that? <laughs> okay. Next question. Blender guy three five nine ask. I'm new here, and that how, and that I that how I love this Blender today channel. Thank you. And it's work on Sprite Fright from the Animation Studio. Have you seen the guys? A small. Um, I wonder if if you heard anything what's going on in that project. Yes. Today is Monday, and like every Monday the team of the at the blender animation studio they release these production logs and in production logs you can see the amazing things they've been working on hey a test on physics burning all right spoiler alert hey wow hair actual hair interesting more fire sculpting animation 2d actually fire sculpting <laughs> what about banta flow and you and and uh... exciting you see there is a bunch of uh, modeling Tritopo, little birds wing placement i'm not gonna spoil anymore because uh you need to go check it out blender cloud remember blender cloud helps blender development as well I was wondering if you heard yes i heard and i should share it next question so it's one minute past six let's do five more questions timothy have a happy monday pablo happy monday to you team uh, will blender be getting a switch type node for geometry nodes and shader editor where we can animate between each socket this will be great for product designers render different materials back to back in an animation and for geometry nodes animate between different pieces of geometry here's a quick mock-up and let's see so is this switch? yeah 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 there is actually a um th there is a mock-up of a switch node 
and it has a um, yeah like index uh, slider and then the type and the mockup actually has the um, selector where you can choose what kind of switch node right because here you have to switch between shaders um, then you can have to switch between floats ints um, anything really which socket to output um, but yeah they should have a, a, a switch or not if you don't have a switch how do you know like between a vector and a color or well that's easier <laughs> but a geometry and a color so then you connect and then whatever is in the output because can only have one output right that's probably developers will hate me for think <laughs> about that just switch any 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 socket into another socket all right hey no i didn't say uh, uh with the y next uh question gabriel 5578 hello pablo how are you? I'm doing great. Have a look at the roadmaps at the developer.blender.org and they are all out of date. For modeling and sculpt section still shows the roadmap of 2.90. Are there any plans to update the current roadmaps? Well, well, that, yeah, there is always plans. What's, what's going on with their, the, the, their teams, the respective teams? They need the modules. They need to update it. 2.92. And even then, they, they, they I mean, the, the fast high poly mesh editing is still a work in progress. Um, still not there. The UV for gaming environment is an ongoing project. Um, then, yeah, OpenSavDiv also. So they need to be updated at least to see how it's going to progress. We are in 2.92 already. And also to see what's the status of this. So long-term roadmap. Ah, this is the image. And sculpt also. Brush management, yeah, right. That's still not even close. There is no design for it. It's not gonna be for 2.92 and uh, it needs to be designed. So not really think about 2.93 either, unfortunately. next question but yeah they should be updated and uh, we just need to poke the developers to like hey um oh it's always nice to maybe ask about it in the um, the modules remember each each module here they have um if you go to sculpt for example you have the sculpt paint texture module on blender chat and the same for modeling there is a there's a modeling um channel so it's modeling module on blender chat so go there, ask, and uh, yeah. Question number three, slow kid. Hello, Pablo. I always thought the names of the mesh volume mesh modifiers are a bit misleading. For me, mesh to volume should be named volume to mesh. The original name makes you feel like they are applying the modifier to a mesh that becomes a volume. While well, you're actually applying the modifier to a volume the, to take the same shape of a mesh. Same thing for the other modifier. It should be mesh to volume. Hmm. From mesh, people, how, what do you guys think in the chat? From mesh, agreed, agreed. I never had an issue with with with, uh, with it personally. I um. From a volume to a mesh. Mesh to volume makes more sense. You see, now you have the now you get both mesh to volume or volume from mesh. Imagine if this got <laughs> inverted, people will even be more confused. Like I have this mesh, and then I want to convert this mesh. A volume to mesh right because I have the mesh and I want to convert from the volume uh, mesh from volume and then it will be yeah um, it's one of those things that can be <laughs> make it an option <laughs> yeah yeah a user preference <laughs> to change the name of a tool very friendly 
Um, next, um, I mean, if there is quorum for changing it, I'm all up for it. But uh, it's it's something that has to be. Yeah, you see, not even in the chat there is people that uh, agreed on it, and um, and yeah, changing that is kind of a big deal. It should be done for Blender three or Blender four because it's big one. Um, what about the new hair object? Is there any news of those dynamics works? Uh, no, no news yet. No news yet. And dynamics, um, there, there is some discussion in the in the geometry nodes team about how dynamics should work with the rest of uh, the nodes, but uh, it's very, very, very early stages. And uh, yeah, it should take uh, hair dynamics into account as well. Question number two, Schaberg. Pablo, great show as always. Thank you. Random question. Is there a shortcut key to turn off the rendering camera icon on multiple selected objects? What? The render rendering camera icon. Um oh, so like set the visibility. A shortcut. No, not that I know. This this one. By the way, this is gonna become by default again. This little camera icon. Because it's um yeah, it was planned a while ago, but it was just uh, lost in all the improvements. The No, there is no current way, as far as I know, to set the rendering. You can set it to um, maybe render... Well, yeah, actually there is... there The one way is, is to do it from the object settings. So, my evil twin here. Um, if you go to the object visibility, and then you see, you toggle here, but then you can do Alt-click and then that would affect all the objects. So hold the Alt key while pressing the renders uh, button here. And there's no shortcut. However, can we edit? Assign shortcut. Let's do F, uh, which F is free? F7. So let's see. Oh, it only affects the current one. Oh, wait, can I, is it? Is there an option in the... Okay, this uh, the show is over, by the way. I'm just playing around Blender now. I'm just seeing if I can find the key binding F7. And then context toggle and to see if... Oh, no, there is no... It would be nice to have a, an option when you set these kind of toggles to affect multiple objects. That would be nice. Wow, this is so... Uh, this, this editor needs so much love. Look at you. When you expand it, then the alignment goes... <laughs> Moves. Ah. So much love. Developers, where are you? Please come, make something like... Make the Keymap Editor awesome. The Keymap Editor is one of those uh, editors that you fix it once and it's done. It's not like Eevee or Cycle, that it, it never ends, you know? It, it just can, keeps getting better forever and they add a new paper and then we can improve it. A Keymap Editor, you just do it once well and it's over all right um uh, that was my way of uh, getting people to maybe work on it or do something similar to it in a right click select today i saw a, an improvement that it it doesn't sound um it was here right click select um it didn't where was it ah it was something about udims it was to add the udim display and that sound, sounded like a great option. Here, this option. I even voted. I voted it. And um, it's super simple. It's, it's, uh, it's asking about having the UDIM tile display on top of the tile itself. So you don't have to guess. And um, that would be great. And it's super simple. So if you're a new developer and want to get in, dive into the code. This is a great candidate. Alrighty. <laughs> I said it. Okay, it's over. I am done, or did I answer all of them? All of the ones, all the fives that I wanted. Okay, it's five, 11 minutes past. Okay, yeah, it's done. Cool. We are done with this questions for today, for this week. Next week, we have, uh, we can expect a bunch of geometry notes improvements. We can also expect 
maybe some EV depth of field, maybe, yeah, yeah, I think so. And a few other user interface, but who knows? That's the magic of Blender and of Blender, of open source in general, that somebody come from the community can jump in and make something awesome. And uh, just out of nowhere, we get a surprise. It's like Christmas every Monday. So stay tuned. We're gonna see each other next week in the same place at the same time. Watch out, headphones uh, users in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, I almost say alrighty. I'm not gonna say it. How many likes? 400. Not, not enough, not enough. Okay, see you next week, same place, same time for another episode of Blender Today Live. Bye.